All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, we have another exciting class session for you today. A uh, couple quick announcements before we get started. Uh, homework one was submitted last night, uh, or I guess actually Tuesday, Tuesday night. Uh, and homework one grading is in progress. You can expect that to be graded within about a week. Uh, homework two is assigned. So you can find the homework file under Canvas files, homework assignments. Uh, homework two is assigned and it's due two weeks from this last Tuesday, which is September 27th. And that will be on hydrology for stormwater design. So it's gonna cover um, the ABM method. It's gonna cover our infiltration mechanisms, which we'll be talking about today and during the next class session. Uh, and it's gonna cover unit hydrographs, which we'll cover after that. Yeah, are there any questions on homework one or homework two? Are there any other questions just about uh, the class in general? Any questions? Yes. So the project is going to take up most of the last third or so of the class. So you'll be primarily doing in-class project work for the last third of the class. Um, and then kind of in the middle section of the class, we're going to be covering uh, some of the models that we'll be using for the project. And so the work that you'll be doing for that will also go into the project. So we're going to gradually transition into the project as we go uh, through the class. But the first yeah, third or so of the class is primarily going to be background material that you'll need for the project. Yeah. And I'll, I'll start posting more um, information on the project uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's not something you need to worry about right away, but uh, we'll get to it fairly soon. Yeah. Okay. Were well, there any other questions uh, just about the class in general? Oh, uh, one second. Let me. Okay. Well, uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so let's review what we covered last time. Last time we finished up our discussion on rainfall estimation. So we talked about IDF relationships, our intensity, duration, frequency relationships a little bit more. And we presented an algorithm for creating synthetic rainstorms from IDF relationships using what's called the alternating block method. And I went through an example of um, how we can implement the alternating block method in code. Uh, there'll be a question on the alternating block method in your homework, so you may use the code that I did in class for that homework problem. Um, but the alternating block method is a uh, technique that's widely used within industry and modeling to create synthetic rainstorms. Okay. And we also started our discussion of runoff generation mechanisms. So for the next couple of lectures, we're going to be concerned with the processes by which rainfall is transformed into runoff. Okay, we're going to be looking at rainfall runoff modeling. And we went through two different uh, major mechanisms for runoff generation. And those included infiltration excess runoff and saturation excess runoff. Uh, can anyone explain to me what the difference is between these two runoff generation mechanisms based on what we talked about last time? Yes. Uh, infiltration excess assumes that the top layer of soil uh, is saturated and then runoff starts from that test and then the saturation excess assumes that the soil structure is saturated with the water vapor and then from there starts flowing out to uh, whatever it's saying, like a river or stream. Right, so that's exactly right. Um, so just to recap, um, and make sure everyone could hear. So infiltration excess runoff is essentially um, saturation that occurs from above. So the rainfall falls on the land surface. It saturates a thin layer on the top of the soil. The rainfall falling on the landscape can no longer infiltrate into the soil once it becomes sufficiently saturated and it will flow off the land surface into the nearest channel. Uh, saturation excess runoff uh, occurs from below. So essentially the rainfall falls on the landscape, infiltrates into the water table, the water table rises, and the water table eventually breaks out over the land surface where it becomes overland flow and flows into a channel. Yes. Uh, 
It could be either one. It's hard to know unless you know where the water table is. So is is that location located near a channel or a stream? No, no it's just like um, along the Okay, so that could that could be infiltration excess runoff then, um, because generally the water table will be closest to the surface near where the channel network is, um, and so sometimes that's where saturation excess runoff will predominate. So it could be either one, but yeah. So when the water table rises up above the land surface, essentially, yeah. It could be either, but if it's far enough away from a channel, it could be infiltration excess runoff. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, and just to quiz you, uh, which type of runoff generation mechanism is primarily used in modeling software? Infiltration excess runoff. Um, which type of runoff generation is the dominant mode for natural watersheds? Saturation excess runoff, okay, very good. Okay, so we talked about runoff generation mechanisms and we began talking about how we might go about modeling infiltration processes, uh, particularly in a physics-based way. So we talked about, uh, essentially breaking down a soil element and discussing you know, the different components of the soil element. We did a little bit of review of geotech. Um, so we talked about the different components of a soil volume. You have your volume of soil grains, you have your volume of water, you have your volume of air, uh, and you also have the total volume of your control volume, which is VS. So this is the volume of uh, CV, I'm just reviewing from last time. This is the volume of water. And we could define the volumetric soil moisture content as the volume of water in our soil element divided by the entire volume of the control volume. Okay, the porosity, as you may remember from geotech, is essentially the volume of the voids divided by the volume of the sample. So the volume of the voids is the volume of the water plus the volume of air. And when the soil is saturated, the volumetric soil moisture content is equal to the porosity. So we'll be using that identity later on uh, when we discuss the green amp method. Okay, so we talked about our soil volume. We also defined this quantity here. So this is the flow rate per unit area. So we're just defining uh, flow to be positive in the upwards direction. So this is the upwards Z direction. And we can define the flow rate per unit area as the flow rate through our surface divided by the area of our surface. Okay, so we'll need this definition for later as well. Yes. Uh, Vs is the volume of the control volume. Uh, the volume of the solids I denoted in the last lecture is Vm, but we don't end up using it. Uh, we're just looking at the other components. Yeah. Okay, so the flow rate per unit area is given by the flow rate in the upwards direction divided by the area of the surface. And from this relationship, we, we derived a continuity equation. So just like we could derive a continuity equation for an open channel, we can derive a continuity equation for the fluid flow in our soil element. And let's just uh, repeat again, what does, what does continuity state in, in plain English? What does the continuity equation state? Yeah, so I think you, you, meant, you said it last time. Uh, it's that the change in volume within our control volume is equal to the flow in minus the flow out, right? The rate of change of the volume within our control volume is equal to the flow in minus the flow out. Mathematically, for our soil volume, we express that as DAW divided by DT 
plus dq by dz is equal to zero. So we're assuming no external input to the system. Um, just like with the open channel version of this equation, this represents the rate of change of volume of the fluid within our soil element. And this represents essentially um, flow in minus flow out. So this is the flux. Um, okay, and we showed that if we take this equation here and we divide by, we divide the entire thing by the area of our surface, the area at the top of the control volume, we can express this in a more familiar way. So if we divide by AS, this is just uh, reviewing from the very last part of class, we get the following equation for continuity in our soil element, d theta by dt plus d little q by dz is equal to zero. Okay. So this is, this is stating the same thing, but we've just normalized by the area. Okay, so it's now expressed in terms of the change in the volumetric soil moisture content over time and the flow per unit area into our control volume. But it's really stating the same thing as the last continuity equation, that the change in moisture within our control volume is equal to the flow in minus the flow out. Okay, so do we have enough to model the flow of water within a soil element? Do we have enough? So for our open channel formulation, uh, was it enough to just have a mass balance or did we need something else? Right, we need uh, energy or force, force balance, remember? So for the St. Benant equations, we had a mass balance and we had a force balance, okay? We need something to essentially describe this term here, this Q. So we need something to specify this Q something to specify this flow rate per unit area. And much like for the case of open channel flow, we can do this by applying a force balance. So I'm not gonna do this derivation. I'm gonna give you the outcome of what happens when you apply that equation. Because we've already done this before. And what you end up with is something called Darcy's law. Has anyone encountered Darcy's law in a previous class? Okay, what class was that? You, uh, you got it in hydraulics? Yeah. Geotech? Okay, so this is a really important equation. This is kind of the fundamental equation for uh, groundwater hydrology. Um, it comes from a force balance. And the equation is as follows. The flow rate per unit area is equal to negative KH where KH is the hydraulic conductivity times the gradient in the head. Okay, so let me just label these elements. This again is the flow rate per unit area. This is the hydraulic conductivity. And this is the gradient in the head. And note that we're doing this in the Z direction. You can also do this in the X direction or the Y direction, but uh, this is the gradient in the head over the Z direction. Okay, so essentially what this equation is stating is that the flow rate per unit area within our soil volume <laughs> is linearly related to the gradient in the head, okay? So does anyone wanna take a shot at a kind of just describing what this equation means in plain English? Let's just assume this KH is just some constant. Yes. 
um, boiling the water to go from a location of higher than to lower? Yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a great explanation. Um, you know, so basically, the higher the head difference, the greater the flow rate you're going to see, right? So it's the same same thing as uh, what you just stated. Okay. Um, so let me just draw a picture here of Darcy's law. Okay. Let's say we have some container, some cylinder. We're going to be looking in the z direction. Okay. And let's say it's filled with some soil and some uh, part of the cylinder. Okay, so this part is filled up with soil. And let's say we have kind of a manometer or something here. And we have another manometer here. Okay. And we have flow going in, Q, flow going out, Q. We have our soil volume in here. And this has some hydraulic conductivity KH. Actually, let me, uh, let me label that inside here. This is KH, hydraulic conductivity. Our length of the soil volume we'll call delta Z. And we have some measured heads inside this manometer. So this is the water surface. You take a manometer. Okay. And our difference in head is going to be the difference between these two here. So this is delta H. Okay. And what Darcy's law states is that Q, which is equal to the flow rate per unit area, let's just say that the area of this part here is A, is equal to negative hydraulic conductivity times the gradient in the head over our distance C. Okay, so you can kind of visualize it like this. Okay, so let's, let's think about the head difference. So let's think about, uh, so what are the different components of the head for flow through porous media. So let's say, let's say we have, we're doing a force balance. Let's say we're doing a force balance on some volume of soil. Let's, so let's say we have a potted plant and a pot with a, uh, you know, some soil in it. And we take the pot, we hold it up and we pour water into it. What are the forces acting on the water as it goes through that volume? Yes. Pressure. Yeah, pressure, pressure and gravity together. Um, what else? What other forces are there acting? So what's what's one force as it's moving through the soil itself? What's one force that's acting on it? Friction. So the friction, Darcy's law assumes that the friction is a linear function of the velocity. So we have friction, and there's one more force that's acting on the water within the soil matrix. Did, uh, did you have an idea? Exactly. So that is the other, that is the other force acting on the water. So if you have, um, if you have a potted plant, you take water, you pour it into the potted plant and you hold it up, you know, the water is going to drain out of the bottom, but if you leave it there, you know, there'll still be some water within the soil even after it's all drained out. So that means there must be a force resisting gravity that's holding it in place. Um, and that force is called the, uh, the suction force or the, uh, 
what's often referred to in terms of head as the matrix potential. So let me just write out um, for unsaturated flow. So when the soil volume is not completely saturated, our head is going to be the sum of two different components. The first is Z, which is the gravitational head. And the second I will call psi. And this is the matrix potential. Okay, so let me, let me write this out. So this is the total head. This is the gravitational head. And this is the matrix potential. And this is essentially due to capillary action. This is the, uh, it's the potential associated with the suction force that is holding the water in place and resisting gravity. Okay, so basically the head that we have in our dH by dz is the sum of these two components for unsaturated flow. Okay, so what we can do is we have an expression for Q and we have an expression for continuity. We can essentially just take that expression for Q and plug it into here. And if we do that, I'm not gonna go through the full derivation because it's really boring. But if we do that, if we plug in Q into our continuity equation, what we end up with is what's called Richard's equation. Has anyone heard of Richard's equation? No. So this is one they often don't cover in undergrad. And I'll uh, kind of explain why in a second. But Richard's equation will take the following form. It's another partial differential equation. D theta by dt is equal to d by dz of capital D d theta by dz plus kh, the hydraulic conductivity. Okay, uh, this d is called the soil water diffusivity. And again, this is the hydraulic conductivity. And both d um, both D and the hydraulic conductivity in general are functions of the volumetric soil moisture content. So D and KH are functions of theta. Okay, so this, this is the full physically based model for infiltration in soil. Um, you will almost never see this being used for stormwater though. Um, because it's way too complicated to solve. Like I mentioned, this D and this KH, these are generally nonlinear functions of theta. And so you end up with a very difficult to solve equation. So there's really only one stormwater model I can think of that actually implements this equation. It's called uh, GSSHA. Uh, but in general, this is way too difficult to solve um, in general. And so it's not often used, but this is as close as we can get to a fully physically based model of infiltration. Um, and, and even then this equation is not, it has some assumptions in it that are also not accurate. So infiltration is very difficult to model. I wanna, I wanna stress that point. It's one of, the, one of the parts of stormwater engineering where we have the least certainty of what's happening. So this is the full physically based equation. What I'm going to show you for the remainder of class today is a simplification of this equation called the green amped model. Okay, so that's what we're going to be discussing. Um, before that, I just wanted to make one more point about the hydraulic conductivity. So let's revisit hydraulic conductivity. Who remembers, uh, who remembers hydraulic conductivity from geotech? or hydraulics, what does hydraulic conductivity tell us essentially? Yes. 
characterized like water between the two explodes. Right. So it essentially tells us it's a measure of how easy it is for the water to move through the soil or how fast it'll move through the soil. So um, it's a measure. I'll just say it's a measure of how fast water can move through the soil. Note that in general though, as I mentioned before, KH is a function of theta, our volumetric soil moisture content. So in general, KH will change depending on what the volumetric soil moisture content is. However, there is hope because we can instead often look at what happens to KH as the soil becomes saturated. Okay, so we'll often be interested rather in KH star, uh, which is the saturated hydraulic conductivity. Okay, so the saturated hydraulic conductivity, this is a property of, of a given soil. You can look this up in a table and you no longer have to worry about what the soil moisture content is because you know it's saturated. So this is a, this is a property of soils. Uh, just to give you a few examples, um, you know, first the, the KH star or saturated hydraulic conductivity will vary depending on the soil type. So we might have sand, we might have loam, we might have clay, and it varies a lot. Um, from soil to soil, but here are some um, example values. For sand, you might have something on the order of 11 centimeters per hour. For loam, you might have a hydraulic conductivity on the order of 0 0.34 centimeters per hour. And for clay, your hydraulic conductivity is going to be very, very low. Um, so on the order of 0 0.03 centimeters per hour. And again, these vary a lot from soil to soil. So don't take these particular values uh, as being the only ones, uh, but there's a very big difference between different types of soil and their hydraulic conductivities. Okay. Great. Are there any questions on what I've presented so far? Hydraulic conductivity, Darcy's law. Um, Richard's equation. Any questions on what I've covered so far? No? Okay, cool. Well, then we're going to get into the main topic of what I want to talk about today, which is the green amped model of infiltration. Who's heard of this? Who's heard of this model before? Has anyone heard of green amps? Okay, a couple of people. Um, so this is the green amped model of infiltration. And this was developed all the way back in like 1911, I think. So it's been around a while. It's a simplification of the full Richards equation that is something that's much easier to compute. And for that reason, it's often used in hydrologic models today. So SWIM uses the green amped equation and HEC HMS also uses the green amped equation. It's probably the closest you can get to a physically based infiltration model for stormwater modeling in practice. Okay, uh, so it simplifies the full Richards equation by making a couple of assumptions. And I will list these assumptions here before I start talking about conceptually what the green amp model is doing. So there's a couple of assumptions. They're simplifying assumptions. First, we have a homogeneous soil profile. So in other words, KH, our hydraulic conductivity, uh, and the porosity are uniform. Okay. And 
of infinite depth. Okay. Second, no water table. There's no water table below the soil. Uh, no water table or impermeable lower boundary. Okay, three, we have a uniform initial soil water content. This is uniform throughout the soil volume. I'm going to call it, oh, something's wrong with my, okay. Uh, it's uniform throughout the soil volume. I'm going to call it theta naught, and it's less than the saturated volumetric soil moisture content, which is the same as the porosity, okay? So we have some soil volume that is unsaturated, and it has a uniform initial soil moisture content of theta naught. Okay, and the final assumption we make is that we have a sharp piston-like wetting front. Okay, we have a sharp piston-like wetting front in which the soil above the edge of the wetting front is completely saturated. And the soil below has soil moisture content theta naught. Okay, so we're gonna assume that the wetting front that's produced by the rainfall falling over the landscape has a sharp boundary in which everything above that boundary is saturated and everything below that boundary has our initial soil moisture content theta naught. This, uh, I would say all of these assumptions are not realistic, um, but this fourth one here is probably the most consequential because it's really not, this doesn't really occur this way in practice. Usually you'll have kind of a gradient in your wetting front, um, but making this assumption is going to allow us to derive a closed form solution. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and kind of draw out what's going to happen here. So I'll just, I'll first kind of go over the idea of the green amps model conceptually, and then I'm gonna start putting numbers on it uh, so you can kind of see how it works out. Okay, are there any questions, questions before I get into the green amps model in more detail? Any questions? Okay, cool. So let's say we have some soil volume. We're looking at a cross section of soil here. We have our grass on top. Actually, let me draw this a little bit lower down. Here we have our soil volume here. We have some grass on top. We have our soil volume going down. Okay. And we have some rainfall falling over the surface of our soil. And I'm going to say this rainfall has a rate, a precipitation rate of WT. Okay, so this is our precipitation rate. We have that the initial soil moisture content inside this volume. This is unsaturated. And our volumetric soil moisture content is equal to our known initial soil moisture content theta naught. Okay, so what happens conceptually when the water falls over the soil surface is you develop this wetting front. Okay, it starts off up here and it moves down over time. So it's moving down over time. And it keeps moving down. 
And eventually, once it extends far enough down into the soil, the possible infiltration rate into the soil, the potential infiltration rate, uh, is less than the rainfall rate. And what you'll get is ponding occurring over the surface of the soil. Okay, so after some amount of time and after that wetting front moves far enough down, you'll get ponding occurring at the surface of the soil where that water ponds on the surface and eventually that ponded water runs off the hill slope, you know, assuming that there's some slope on the uh, land surface that you're looking at where it makes its way down into a channel. Okay. So that, that is conceptually the idea of the green amps model. And the green amps model provides equations for computing these different components, such as the infiltration rate, the wetting front depth, and the cumulative infiltration. Um, so quick test here. Uh, does this represent saturation excess runoff or infiltration excess runoff? Infiltration excess runoff, right? Okay, so this, this is kind of the... Uh, the archetypal model for infiltration excess runoff. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase this here. And we're going to go and I'm gonna reuse this drawing uh, later, but I'm gonna go through and I'm going to discuss some different quantities that we need to keep track of for our green amped model, okay? So let's define a couple of quantities. Okay, the first I'm going to call F T, little f of t, and this is the infiltration rate. Okay, and this is the flow rate per unit area. into the soil. Okay, and this is in units of length per unit time. So for instance, meters per second. So for instance, uh, the infiltration rate gives you the flow rate per unit area into the soil. If you want the total um, flow rate into a hill slope, for example, you would take this infiltration rate and multiply it by the area of the hill slope, and then you'll get the total flow rate in meters cubed per second, for instance, okay? So this is the flow rate per unit area, okay? And I want to note here that FT, our infiltration rate, this is equal to negative little q. Okay, so it's the same thing as the little q before, but in the opposite direction. Infiltration rate, we're positive in the downwards direction. With the little q, we're talking about positive in the upward direction, okay? So that's the first quantity we need to keep track of. The second quantity is the cumulative infiltration. And this is essentially the volume of infiltration per unit area and it is in units of length. Okay, so what this essentially is, is having some issues today. Um, this is the integral of the infiltration rate over time. Okay, so it gives you the volume of infiltration per unit area. If you want the total volume that's infiltrated into a hill slope, you take this quantity and you multiply it by the area of the hill slope and you'll get the volume of infiltration in units of meters cubed, for example. Okay, and I also wanna write here, this is our little f of t is equal to D big FT by DT. Okay, so that's the second quantity we need to keep track of. The third quantity I want you to define is Z F of T. So this is the depth of the wetting front. OK, 
Okay, so this, um, it's uh, basically exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it can also be called the infiltration depth. And this is also in units of length. Sorry, I've made a typo up here. This is in units of length. So note that this is in units of length as well, but this is not the same thing as the cumulative infiltration. Our ZF of T is the literal depth of the wetting front. So uh, let me go back and just draw this out. So if we have rainfall occurring over the surface, and let's just say we have that this portion of soil here has saturated. Uh, we'll say that this portion is saturated and our soil moisture content is equal to phi, our porosity here. The depth of the wetting front is literally this, this distance here. Okay. And we can relate the depth of the wetting front to the cumulative infiltration. How can we do that? How can we relate the depth of the wetting front to the cumulative infiltration? So that would give us, if we multiplied cumulative infiltration by the area, that would give us the total volume. So I'll give you a hint. Um, we have that the soil moisture content below the wetting front is theta naught, and the soil moisture content above the wetting front is phi. So what happens uh, when we get a wetting front of depth z f of t? What is our what is our cumulative infiltration in terms of those three variables? Our cumulative infiltration is equal to ZF of T times uh, phi, our porosity, minus the initial soil moisture content, right? So essentially all of the voids in this part of the soil have been filled because it's saturated. So we can find the total infiltration depth by taking the depth of the wetting front times this quantity here. So note, um, let me just, I'll write this down on a different page here because I'm gonna need more of this page. Um, we have that F of T is equal to Z F T times our porosity minus the initial soil moisture content. This is uh, the, depth of wetting front. This is the cumulative infiltration depth and this quantity here is called the initial soil moisture deficit. So it's the, you know, the soil moisture content at saturation minus the initial soil moisture content. And so we can also express this as ZF of T times delta theta. So this is the notation we'll be using for the initial soil moisture deficit. Okay, so let me kind of go back to our picture and give you a conceptual overview of what's going to happen in terms of the variables that we've defined. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Is it basically like the, like the Zia, but like part of that whole area, like in theory? Yeah. So the cumulative infiltration 
if you take the volume of water that is infiltrated into the soil and divide it by the area of the soil surface, that is the cumulative infiltration. So it's equivalent to the depth of the wetting front times the difference in soil moisture content between saturated and unsaturated. Yeah, cool, good question. Um, are there any questions before I move on? Yes. Okay, so let me let me go back and draw a graph of what's going to happen in our green amped model. So I'm gonna draw a graph over time. Okay, so this is our time axis, and this is our infiltration rate f of t. Okay, so we have some rainfall coming in initially, WT. So under the green amped model, our initial infiltration into the soil volume is going to just be WT, the rate of the rainfall. As this wetting front increases in depth, what you're going to see is that the total infiltration of capacity of the soil is going to go down. Uh, let me draw this a little better here. So you'll get this curve come, coming down. And this is the potential infiltration that can occur. So this is the maximum possible infiltration rate. And that is going to decrease over time as the depth of our wetting front increases. So what happens is eventually our rainfall rate will intersect with this potential infiltration rate and that will kind of cap the amount of infiltration that can occur. So you'll see decreasing infiltration over time after that point. Okay, so what about the runoff? How does the runoff figure into this picture here. Exactly, yeah. So this rainfall is still occurring at rate WT. So the rainfall is still occurring. And the difference between these two lines here, this is the runoff rate. which I will call R of T. So in other words, R of T, our runoff rate is equal to WT minus F of T. So at some point, the infiltration capacity of the soil will be less than uh, the amount of rainfall that's coming in. And at that time, that's when ponding will occur. So there's another point on this plot I want to draw your attention to. Okay, this is called the ponding time. That's the time at which ponding will start to occur. So it's possible to have a rain event that, you know, it starts raining, but it might be a short rain event. And so you never get to the point where runoff actually occurs because you won't get to the time where ponding starts. So there's kind of a, this initial point in the rainfall event where you kind of get all of the rainfall infiltrating. At some point, the infiltration capacity is exceeded, and that's the point where, you're where, you're start to, where you will start to get runoff, okay? Well, are there questions uh, conceptually on this model before I move on? Any questions? Okay, so let me go ahead and kind of move into the more formal part of the green amped formulation. So there are two cases in our green amped model. Okay, so the first case one if the rainfall rate is less than the saturated hydraulic conductivity, ponding never occurs. Okay, and you'll see why in a little bit. 
So if the rainfall rate is less than the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the soil, you won't get any runoff. And in that case, our infiltration rate, F of T, has two cases. It is equal to W, the rainfall rate, if the time is less than or equal to the time of the, the duration of the rainfall event and zero otherwise. So note that TW here, this is uh, duration of rainfall. And W here, this is our rainfall rate in units of inches per hour, for example. Okay, so if the rainfall rate is less than the saturated hydraulic conductivity, uh, ponding will never occur and you won't get any runoff. Okay, so we kind of have this threshold behavior for the green amped model. Okay, case two is the interesting case. I will just uh, give you a second to write that down. Case two is the interesting case. So this is the case where if the rainfall rate is greater than or equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity, in this case, ponding will occur. And this is the case that the green amped model formulates uh, explicit equations for, for the infiltration rates and for the cumulative infiltration. Okay, so again, let's recall um, for the case where we have a wetting front ZF of T, an initial soil moisture content theta naught and a saturated soil moisture content phi, the cumulative infiltration is equal to ZF of T times our initial soil moisture deficit. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we need an expression for, we need an expression for the infiltration rate. And what is the infiltration rate equal to? Um, we gave an identity earlier on for the infiltration rate. It was equal to something else we derived earlier in class. Yeah, so the infiltration rate is equal to negative Q. So what might we do to compute the infiltration rate? What other uh, equation can we use in this case to compute the infiltration rate that we derived earlier? Darcy's law, yeah. So the idea behind the green amp equation is to use Darcy's law to compute this infiltration rate. So let's say we're going to use Darcy's law. Okay, and we're going to use kind of a discrete approximation of Darcy's law. So let me write this out. If Ft is equal to negative Q, that means that Ft is equal to Kh star times dH by dz, right? Because Q is equal to negative Kh star times dH by dz. Okay, so the idea behind green amp is to apply Darcy's law across a discrete distance delta z. Okay, so we're not gonna compute this derivative here. Rather, we're going to look at two discrete points and compute a discrete derivative. So the first point we're going to be looking at is right here at the soil surface. And the second point we're going to be looking at is right below the wetting front. Okay, so this, these are the two points over which we're going to approximate that derivative. So we can write that f of t is equal to kh star 
dh by dz, and that this is approximately equal to kh star times delta h over delta z, where this is carried out over those two points of interest. And this is equal to kh star times h1 minus h2 over z1 minus z2. Okay, so what's, a, uh, what's another expression for this denominator here? What is z1 minus z2 equal to? Z f of t, exactly. So this denominator here, this is equal to z f of t. For the h1 and h2, these are the heads at those two locations. Um, so for the green amp model, we are going to assume that the ponded depth is very small. Okay, so there's almost no ponded water at the surface, perhaps because it runs off the hill slope. Uh, and in that case, H1 is equal to Z1. So I'll just write ponded depth is small. And for H2, our total head, what, is our, what are the two components of our total head again? So we're in the unsaturated zone. What are the two components of our total head? Someone uh, raise their hand. Yeah, so we have the pressure gravitational head and the other one is the, the matrix potential. So H2 will be given by Z2 plus, and I'm going to write the matrix potential as actually not plus, negative absolute value of psi f. So because the two forces are acting in opposite directions, these have to have different signs. So that's why I'm writing it this way. Okay. Which means that H1 minus H2 is equal to our matrix potential plus ZF, uh, ZF of T. Okay. So we can write out our equation. I'm going to go on to another page. We can write out our equation for the infiltration rate. F of T is equal to KH star, our saturated hydraulic conductivity, times the matrix potential plus ZF of T over ZF of T. Okay. Now we can simplify this a little bit more. Okay, so note that ZF of T is equal to the cumulative infiltration divided by our initial soil moisture deficit. Um, remember this comes from our previous equation that the cumulative infiltration depth is equal to ZF of T times the initial soil moisture deficit, right? So we can substitute in this value. What we get is F of T is equal to KH star times matrix potential plus F of T divided by delta theta divided by F of T divided by delta theta. And then if we take this and we multiply by delta theta on the top and bottom, what we get is this expression for little f of t. We get f of t is equal to k h star times the matrix potential times delta theta plus big F of t, our cumulative infiltration depth, divided by big F of t. Okay. So I'm going to save this equation. 
This is going to be the equation we use for computing the infiltration rate. But we have a problem because we still need to compute this big F of T, right? Okay, so what can we do about that? So one thing to note is that little f of t is equal to the derivative of big F of t by dt, right? The infiltration rate is equal to the time derivative of the cumulative infiltration. So we can substitute that in here. And then we have an equation just in terms of big F of t. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Thank you for sticking with me through this derivation. Okay, so we have the derivative of the cumulative infiltration depth over time is equal to KH star times the matrix potential times the initial soil motion deficit plus big F of T over big F of T. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to multiply on both sides by dt. And then I'm going to move all the terms with our big F of t over to this side. Okay, so what we end up with is big F of t divided by the numerator from the other side. Uh, times d f of t is equal to k h star d t. Okay, so this is looking promising. What can we do now? Integrate it. So let's go ahead and integrate this. Okay, we're going to integrate this side from zero to t, and we're going to integrate this side from zero to big f of t. And if we carry out that integration, what we get is the following. I'm gonna to go to another page just so that I can put all of the green amped equations on one page. So uh, let me know, anyone still writing here? Okay. So we can get a closed form expression for big F of T. And it is equal to KH star times T plus, Sorry, I'll try to make this look more like a T there. Uh, plus the matrix potential times the initial soil motion deficit times the natural log of one plus big F of T divided by matrix potential times the initial soil motion deficit. Okay, and this is the expression for our cumulative infiltration depth. Okay, and if we want the cumulative infiltration rate, we have from before that our cumulative, uh, sorry, not cumulative infiltration rate. If we want the infiltration rate, we have from before that little f of t is equal to kh star times the quantity matrix potential times our initial soil moisture deficit divided by big F of T plus one. Okay, so this comes from, just from our equation from earlier. We rearrange it. Okay, and finally we can get the, just, to, just for the sake of completeness, the depth of the wetting front once we have big F of T is simply equal to big F of T divided by the initial soil moisture deficit. And I won't derive it, but we can also compute the time deponding. And this is going to be equal to our saturated hydraulic conductivity times the matrix potential times initial soil moisture deficit divided by the rainfall rate times quantity rainfall rate minus saturated hydraulic conductivity. Okay, so this is, I just label this. This is the time to ponding.
This is the depth of the wedding front. Okay, F of T is the infiltration rate. And big F of T is the cumulative infiltration. And that is the green amp model. Okay. So taking a look at this, what's, uh, what's one potential problem you notice about this equation here? Yes. Right. So this is an implicit equation. Sorry, everybody. Um, it's an implicit equation. So you have to solve it numerically. Um, but for the homework, Oh, I didn't load it here. Um, actually, do I have it? Do I have it here? Yes. So for the homework, I have in the type notes an explicit solution to the Green-Amped equation. And you can use this for the homework, for homework problem two, if you don't want to compute the implicit version. So you can just use these versions of the equations instead. I'm not going to go and write them out right now, uh, but you can use the typed versions of the notes for that explicit version. Okay, and this is an approximation, but it's a pretty good one. Okay, cool. Okay, so I got a little time left. Um, so I'm gonna ask you a conceptual question. Um, why does the infiltration rate decrease over time? So that that is uh, that is correct, but in terms of in terms of our equations, can anyone think of a reason why we get this potential infiltration rate decrease over time? Why does it? Why is why is there a point where the water can no longer pass through the surface? Any ideas? So I'm going to give you a couple minutes just to talk it over with your groups. And then I'm going to show you one interpretation for why the potential infiltration rate decreases over time. So what, what is causing the potential infiltration rate to decrease over time? I'm gonna give you about two minutes to discuss it with your groups. All right. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, does anyone want to volunteer a potential explanation for why the infiltration rate decreases over time? Anyone have an explanation in their own words for why the infiltration rate decreases? Why does the infiltration rate decrease as the wedding front increases in depth? Does anyone have, a, anyone have an idea? So the water at the surface is, I mean, the, the soil at the, at the surface is saturated, but the infiltration can still continue for a while. So why is that? Any ideas? So I've posed a question here. We have this expression for the infiltration rate. It's equal to the saturated hydraulic conductivity times the matrix potential plus the depth of the wetting front divided by the wetting front. What happens as the depth of the wetting front keeps growing? and goes to infinity, what happens to the infiltration rate? Can, can someone uh, raise their hand? What happens, to the, what happens to the infiltration rate as the depth of the wetting front increases to infinity? Yes? So it'll actually approach a positive value. It'll approach a positive value. So which, which term will approach one? This term will approach one. So what happens to the infiltration rate as the depth of the wetting front goes to infinity? What does it converge to? Yes. So as ZF goes to infinity, the infiltration rate converges to the saturated hydraulic conductivity. OK, so essentially at that point, if the rainfall rate is above the saturated hydraulic conductivity, it can no longer infiltrate into the soil and it'll get ponding. Okay, cool. 
uh, I think I am out of time. So uh, go ahead and uh, enjoy your weekends and I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you.